Hello chess friends and welcome to Yazard of Chess channel and welcome to an absolutely crazy gameplay by the latest version of Stockfish, the Power Stockfish 16. Today we see the fish battling it out against another top engine Berserk in a crazy Anderson variation of the uh, Evans Gambit of the Italian game. So today we see the big fish playing uh, the beautiful Evans Gambit but with the black pieces. Today we see how Stockfish is defending against one of the sharpest lines of the Italian opening. And the most beautiful part about this game is that you actually witness an amazing queen sacrifice for two minor pieces as opening theory of the Evans Gambit so in my opinion really really spectacular game but I think also great game of great theoretical value because if you're bothered maybe um, by the Evans Gambit with the white pieces I think this is a perfect video for you but probably not a good for, uh, video for my uh, brother-in-law Argad Mator because he's playing very often the Evans Gambit so uh, today we'll try to destroy Argad Mator's favorite opening so let's dive now with the, into the game here with the white pieces e4 played by Berserk stock first response was e5 knight chop three and after a couple more moves we have now the Gioco Piano of the Italian opening now we have the Evans Gambit with the move b4 Stockfish accepts the challenge and now comes this uh, common method with the move d4 hitting simply in the center of the board Stockfish accepts now the challenge but you cannot take of course with the pawn because of the bishop's activity against a white king uh, here berserk castles of course tries now to get the rook on the e file because we have to mention uh, the problems the tactical problems of blacks is that the uh, Black's king is simply stuck in, uh, um, in the center of the board, so that's why Berserk is trying to use now the e file in order to create madness all over the board. So, knight of 6 by Stockfish. Now, uh, uh, the game becomes now the so called Anderson variation of the Evans Gambit. We have now the move e5, hitting now the knight, and Stockfish plays now the only move. Every other move, I think, is losing here for, uh, for Black. Stockfish plays now beautiful control play in the center of the board. With the move d5 we have now uh e takes f6 stockfish grabs now also the bishop we have f takes g7 hitting the rook and now of course rook to g8 uh getting an escape uh, with the rook and still with options to cover with the bishop on e6 if for instance rook to e1 happens we have now bishop to g5 uh by uh, by berserk stockfish continues with queen to d5 and now finally rook to e1 attacking now uh, the king on the e file bishop to e6 stockfish covers and now we have a knight from b to d2 getting a new piece into the attack good methods also here by uh, berserk stockfish continues again with the only move rook takes g7 you have to now finally get rid of this annoying pawn on g7 but now knight to e4 uh here you see uh, berserk continues now with huge pressure now there is also the threat of knight of six uh, the royal fork against the king and the queen that's why rook to g6 stockfish protects so far the square knight to h4 attacking now the rook that's the key protector of course of the f6 square but now stockfish continues with the rook to g5 allows here uh berserk to play the fork plays now king to e7 and after knight takes d5 rook takes d5 we have reached now this crazy position in which stockfish has now three minor pieces against the queen and the minor piece by uh by white but we have to say it also stockfish grabbed many pawns while sacrificing the queen so stockfish is relying here on this i don't know five versus two pawn majority uh, on the queen side so stockfish is trying to create madness here on this side of the board what should you do here now from white's perspective you could maybe try c takes d4 but then the rook is hanging bishop to e1 queen to e1 king to d7 i think good game here for uh, for black if you try to play queen to b1 then we simply uh, get uh, this other rook into the game we will eventually play bishop to c3 uh, getting maybe one of these rooks uh, we have also the supported pass pawn uh, on the default again not the optimal continuation uh, here for white if you try maybe rook to f1 uh, here to escape maybe uh, from the attack uh, by the bishop then simple bishop to c3 i don't know then b5 and because the pawns are marching here on the queen side i would say again a devastating devastating uh, game here for for white so after uh, rook to d5 that stockfish played berserk decided to play a very aggressive method with rook to e6 berserk doesn't want to tolerate this minor pieces that are very really in good shape here by black sacrifices now the rook for the exchange f takes e6 of course by the fish and now c takes d4 finally grabbing the pawn so you see berserk got rid of the rook that was actually indirectly hit by the bishop on a5 we have knight to d4 by the fish uh, berserk has to escape now with the queen but now again this idea b5 four versus one pawn majority on the queen side black is here as the moon as the main strategic advantage 
uh, now uh, in the continuation of the game. We have Queen to H7, comes of course with a check, Stockfish escapes, we have G3, you could maybe try here Knight to G6, maybe including uh, your Knight into the game, but actually it doesn't bring you so much. You will probably get one check here, but why uh, Black will simply escape, you may be trying to uh get again the knight very active but with rook to d6 uh, everything is solved i think the pawn on e6 is protected this pawn is marching maybe can be also supported by the b pawn i'm not sure but in my opinion nothing gained here uh for white so after king to d6 g3 uh played by berserk stop which continues now with bishop to c3 hit simply the rook rook escapes to f1 and now tiny little improvement of the king of course the king was a little bit in danger here on d6 Stockfish is trying to get it here, maybe to b6 if necessary, maybe even to the square b7. We have king to g2, again a new improvement of the king. Queen to h6, hitting now the 6th rank, also this weak pawn on e6. Stockfish continues with beautiful bishop to b2, clearing now the path for the pawn on the c file. g4, uh, now berserk at least is searching for counterplay on the king side, tries of course to do something with these two connected passers. Uh, here on this side of the board, Stockfish plays a very, very cool move, I think, again, very thematic move, including now all of the pieces into the game, so this rook has not so far participated in the game, so that's why good move, getting now new attacker into the game, knight to f5, uh, Stockfish continues with c3, it's not impressed by any of this move by, by Berserk, even if you try here, maybe, I don't know, knight to d4, we take, you get your final pawn here, but look at this, it's not working, uh, we simply support again the pass pawn on the c file, you can maybe get a check, maybe rook to d4, and even if you try continue with the pin here against the rook on d4, then look at the c2, bishop gets connected to um, uh, to the rook on d4 and I think again game over uh, here for white so that's why for c3 knight to e3 has been played by berserk but now again rook to c5 simply supporting the main strength of black's position the passer here on the c file h4 uh, berserk continues of course also with the counter play on the king side and now c2 what should you do I've analyzed at home maybe this line for white knight takes c2 giving up finally uh, here uh, this knight for, for this annoying pawn on the c file, but actually it's not working. Look at this, rook to c2, you're trying to push this pawn, and finally uh, black will get the pieces very active. Look at this, the piece activity is, I think, um, something that bothers black in the continuation of the game, because uh, black's pieces are almost on optimal squares all over the board. So you see, white can try to push the pawn, but now eventually, look at this, when you push the pawn, pawn too far, the knight will be cemented here, on, on f5 you're trying to do something like this b2 is covered by the bishop and the knight on f5 so you cannot push to b2 now the h file attack is very dangerous for white to handle and now after a couple more moves look at this you play simply uh, rook to g3 of course different lines could be possible for white but i wanted to show you if really white starts to push the pawns could be very very unpleasant to handle actually the peace activity is solving again all of the position but also all of the tactical problems um, now for black, uh, in one moment, of course, white has to maybe give up here the queen uh, for two minor, p uh, for the rook and, uh, and the knight, and now the b2 square is covered uh, with this three versus one pawn majority on the queen side again, white should uh, be on the losing side for sure, so that's why for c2, berserk tried uh, to hit the rook, stockfish again improves the position of the rook, gets also the pawn on e6 protected, and now h5, stockfish promotes of course the queen here, and berserk is forced now you give up here the rook for the pawn but here berserk relies simply on this passer on the h file but Stockfish doesn't care plays now beautiful rook to g1 great move here by the fish if you take of course look at this knight to e2 is going to have this covered attack uh, against the queen comes of course with the check the queen is lost of course also the game is lost uh, here for white rook to g1 a move that simply uh, gets again a new piece activity it's really important to get this rook behind this pawn it's it's the so-called tarash rule in rook and pawn chess endgames where you should bring your rook behind your enemy's pawns but that's exactly what happened but in a beautiful and spectacular tactical way you cannot take the rook so that's why here a berserk is forced now to play king to h2 and now stockfish again is trying now to activate the rook here now even on the first rank and get both of those rooks on the first rank where it could be very dangerous. Again, you cannot take um, the rook because of the same tactic with knight to e2, the same pattern would happen. So what should you do? If you try to push the pawn, this wasn't played in the game, but again, I've analyzed h7, 
seemed to me like a very very dangerous move for uh, for black to handle because uh, the pawn is just one move far away from uh, from a promotion then look at this we simply play rook to c1 we ignore this idea if you try here h8 the promotion then this rook is coming you're trying to escape again if you escape here to uh, uh to g3 there is always this problem of knight to e2 but now we first pick up this one you have to pick up this one again knight to e2 is winning the game so here after rook to uh, h1 you could escape of course here to g2 because we saw on uh, when you get the king on g3 knight to e2 was always a huge threat but then rook to g1 again is a checkmate immediately so you see again the peace activity solves all of the tactical problems uh, here for, for black. So you can promote the queen. You have now two queens on the board, but you get checkmated. Very, very wild stuff. So after rook to c6, that's why uh, Berserk didn't push the pawn, played now queen to f8, tries of course to deliver some checks maybe, but uh, look at this. After rook to c1, again, some problems on the first rank. Berserk gets a tiny little check, but really nothing spectacular. One more check and now, no good checks are possible you see the queen is now far away from the action i would say now really really losing game here for for white so after move queen to a8 uh, berserk is trying again to get a new piece uh, into the game tries of course to support and also controlling the f3 square because of the knight but now uh stockfish played a beautiful beautiful move maybe if you like to practice some tactics pause the video and try to see now the best continuation here for black black moves and wins the game it's really really a stunning idea so really really crazy stuff okay after queen to a8 stalkers played knight to f3 anyway because uh it seems okay you're losing the knight but here after queen to f3 that berserk didn't play berserk noticed the tactic problems you get this one bishop to e5 and actually you're running into a checkmate sequence you see the queen on f3 took the square the escape route for the king uh here the king cannot escape and now with this bishop with this heavy artillery uh white is getting a spectacular checkmate so yeah, after knight to f3 that's why berserk escaped stockfish continues now with bishop to e5 again with the same pattern if you try to uh, play queen to f3 then again rook to h1 will happen and then you have to give up maybe uh the queen for the rook but again game over here g5 has been played by berserk and actually in this particular position black resigned so what's the issue let's see now possible continuations again white will simply get destroyed like this rook to h1 king to g4 now knight to uh, d4 now all of these three squares are taken look at this uh, by the bishops knights and also by the pawns activity also here by the knights activity so now again rook to g1 is a huge threat you could maybe try knight to g2 to cover yourself but then rook to g1 anyway and whatever you do for instance you try a3 maybe to somehow get a new check against the king but doesn't matter no good checks are possible maybe white can try something like this but look it's now rook to h2 you can grab maybe the piece but now rook to g2 now we simply get this sequence to get an attack against the king now a new attack you have to step back and when the queen is lost it's game over of course here for white uh for white so after rook to g1 you could maybe try to push the pawn here but now again this idea c6 um cutting off simply the activity uh, by the queen now the queen gets disconnected from the knight on on g2 and again it would be game over trying to f4 and then the rook to g2 would be even an amazing checkmate so beautiful beautiful counter evans gambit here by uh, stockfish 16 really crazy stuff uh, this is i think must know theory it's a beautiful beautiful method to destroy uh, the evans gambit with the black pieces i'm sure that agamato is not happy about this game i've texted him already look at this game dude uh how stockfish is destroying your favorite opening so it's a very cool method with this amazing and early queen sacrifice uh, in the opening stage. Very, really, really spectacular stuff again played by Stallfish16. So, okay, I hope that you enjoyed this game. I really enjoyed it a lot. The interesting ideas of the Italian game of the, the Evans Gambit and also of this beautiful Anderson defense. Uh, if you want to see more spectacular, sharp, brutal attacking chess like this, check out our commented chess games played by computer series. Here's the link of our playlist and if you like this content hit the subscribe button see you soon with some more videos and what do we say in the end chess is the best of course